Okay, uh, welcome to another video in the uh, the uh, horse owner series. Um, again, my name is Paul Conroy, I'm a farrier, and uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, laminitis. It's summer now, so I thought I would do this video as a sort of uh, a guide to help you understand laminitis better. Uh, I promise I will try to keep the, the, the technical stuff to an absolute minimum. I won't use any long words uh, if I don't have to. But please appreciate that laminitis is an incredibly complicated disease. Uh, there are books written on the subject, so to try and condense it down uh, is going to be quite difficult. And I am going to miss bits out that aren't necessarily, uh, it's not that they're not relevant, but then you don't need to understand them at a, a, a deep level. So uh I, that's the plan uh, how successful i am uh, we shall see okay so laminitis so what is laminitis so if we break the word laminitis down uh into two it break down into lamin and itis lamin meaning lamini and itis meaning inflammation of so laminitis is inflammation of the sensitive lamini so if we pick our hoof up what we're talking about is this area of the hoof here we have sensitive laminae that grow off this bone and we have insensitive laminae that grow on the back of the hoof and they dovetail together sort of like that okay they dovetail together and they're a really 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 strong bond uh, Chris Pollitt states that uh, these leaves if you spread them out each foot if you spread them out into a surface area it's about the same surface area as a small adult human skin so there is a large surface area of these laminae all the way around uh, the hooves they're incredibly important on the internal and external structures uh, video that I did we talked about the deep digital deep digital flexor tendon here that's constantly pulling okay and with laminitis the bone will rotate downwards in the hoof because of the pull of this so what happens is inflammation of the sensitive lamina you get inflammation in this area of the hoof okay so speaking as a farrier and every other farrier your farrier uh, as well is uh, hitting your hammer on your thumb if ever you've hit your thumb or finger with a hammer think back to what that feels like it really 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 hurts to the point where you can't even think the pain is so intense you just got to go away and be on your own uh, in a world of hurt now imagine hitting your thumb with a hammer and then placing all your weight all your body weight on that thumb okay the pain that you feel the throbbing that you feel is pressure and it's pressure underneath your nail bed and that's what the horse is feeling but the difference is you can lift your finger up and not bear any weight on it the horse has to bear its entire weight it's an incredibly painful disease uh, and these these animals really do suffer with it it's, it's horrible to see them uh, suffering with laminitis the pain is coming from this region here okay and we've got massive inflammation in this area and because the inflammation is trapped between the bone and the hoof it's got nowhere to go much like a tooth abscess any of you've ever had a tooth abscess uh, will will sort of vouch for that it's a pain that you can't get away from it's constantly there because it's trapped against an unyielding structure in this case bone and hoof and that's why horses are in so much pain when it comes to laminitis so that is what laminitis means at, at, at a basic level uh, there are two types of laminitis they are systemic laminitis and mechanical laminitis if we transport ourselves back a hundred years uh, maybe a bit longer now Victorian times when horses were used as male horses carriage horses they were used a, a, a hell of a lot then the type of laminitis that you saw you didn't really see systemic laminitis at all it was all mechanical laminitis and mechanical laminitis is when the stress inside the hoof and the concussion from working on hard surfaces cause the lamini to become inflamed so otherwise healthy lamini become inflamed because they're being overloaded and overworked. If a horse gets laminitis that way, it would be classed as mechanical laminitis, what we call mechanical laminitis. These days, very few horses do that much work. Horses have evolved now to being a leisure, pleasure, more of an athlete, working on different surfaces. So you tend not to see mechanical laminitis. The only time you see it around sort of this time, 2017, is if you have an injury to a foot and the other leg is bearing all of the weight you've got to understand that a horse bears weight 
it spreads its body weight 60% in front, 40% behind. That means that both front feet are designed to take 30% of, of, of its body weight. If you have a foot that's not bearing any weight, then the opposite foot then has to do 60% of the work. You're doubling its workload. If that foot is not supported, it's standard practice in farrier. If you have a horse that's non-weight bearing, the other the other leg will need supporting. Otherwise, what was your good leg will rapidly become your bad leg, as you end up with uh, what they term it these days, standing limb uh, laminitis. Okay, and it's the leg that's doing all the work. Eventually, when these lamini fail, the bone will rotate and often come out the bottom, burst out the bottom of the foot. Okay, so that's that's mechanical laminitis. 2017, by far and away, the only types of laminitis we see in this day and age is systemic laminitis. And systemic laminitis is laminitis that originates from its own system. And there are many causes of laminitis, and I'm just going to deal with the main three of them today, which is fat pony laminitis, equine metabolic syndrome, and Cushing's disease. Uh, the end result is the same often. Uh, but it just gets there a slightly different way. But they're all toxins that come from within the body. So it's the body's own behaviour that's causing the laminitis, and that's called systemic laminitis. Uh, so back to sort of laminitis itself. If your horse gets laminitis, uh, it will go through different stages. Some horses will go through several say, stages, and some horses will only go through a few. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly talk about each stage. The first stage is what uh, is it's known as developmental laminitis, uh, and in the developmental stage, it's the building blocks of laminitis. At this point, the horse is not lame, so no one is aware that the horse has got laminitis. So we're not going to dwell on developmental laminitis. The first time that you know your horse will get laminitis is when your horse has got acute laminitis, which is when the lamini here are inflamed, you've got the heat, you've got the pain, you've got the swelling, you've got the stance, uh, obviously seeing your horse suffering like it is, uh, so you've, it's, it's acute, it's in a lot of pain, but the bone inside the hoof hasn't moved, it's still in its original position. Once the bone inside the hoof starts to move, it leaves the acute phase and it enters the next phase, which is acute founder. For me, Acute laminitis is the cliff edge. If you can prevent your horse from going to acute founder, your horse generally will make a full recovery. No matter how much pain it looks like it's in and no matter how much suffering, once the cause is removed and, and, and the vet has done, done what the vet does and uh, reduced as much as they can, once the inflammation then starts to die down, your horse will go sound. And because the bone's not moved, it should make a full recovery. What happens, certainly from, from my point of view as a farrier, sort of two trims down the line, what, what I'll start to see is that when I'm doing a trim, I'll start to see serum and blood appearing in the white line. And all that is, is the serum that's sat in the wall here and you've just got to wait for it to grow out. And everything growing behind it will reattach itself uh, normally and the inflammation will go down and, and, and the horse will make a full recovery. Once it founders, so once this bone moves from this position and rotates downwards, that's the cliff edge. That's the point where things rarely ever get back to uh, the way that they were. That's when the prognosis reduces greatly. Uh, serious farrier intervention and veterinary intervention are required. And the horse's life, there's no nice, there's no nice way of putting it, the horse's life truly is uh, in danger. Which brings me on to a point that I do want to make. Laminitis is a clinical emergency and it must be treated as a clinical emergency. Some of the bigger horses can founder and rotate within a couple of hours, okay, so you often don't have very long. If you suspect it, don't phone your farrier, phone the vet and ask for an emergency appointment. Mention you suspect it's laminitis and insist the vet is there as soon as possible. Okay, so back to uh, our stages again. So once this bone inside the hoof starts to rotate, then the horse becomes acute founder. Founder meaning that the bone is moving in, in the hoof. All the time that the bone is moving inside the hoof, you've got a massive amount of instability in the hoof. Okay, It's in the acute founder phase. Once the bone stops rotating, so what, what will happen is the vet will take x-rays every other day or wherever it is. Once, it, once they get two x-rays where the bone is still in the same position, then it stops being acute and it moves on to the next phase, which is chronic founder. 
There are two types of chronic founder, type 1 and type 2, which we're not going to go into today. It's more of a farrier veterinary discussion more than it is farrier horse owner discussion. Uh, I'm not don't need to patronise you, but it would make the video... Uh, I'd have to use language that you wouldn't understand and it would make the video about three hours long. So we'll leave that. The horse will go into the chronic phase. And the chronic phase is the bone is incorrectly orientated in the foot. It's not in the right place. Uh, some horses that are chronic, when all the inflammation dies down, can be, I'm not saying that they're sound, but they can be comfortable. They can be uh, okay. Some more than others. It depends on several other parameters within the foot. Uh, but they can be okay and it's the chronic phase and it's the bit where you look at your horse's feet and everyone can tell that your horse has had laminitis. The feet go really ugly and blocky and bulky and, and what's happening is you're starting to get long term changes to the feet because its anatomy is not in the right place because of the attack of laminitis. It's a farrier's job and the vet's job and the skill of your farrier to then try and return the foot back to normal. It's possible in some cases, less so in other cases, but it does depend on certain clinical things uh, within the foot. So they're the three main stages and then there's a fourth stage known as sinker. The sinker phase or the sink, a horse that sinks is what happens is the bone, instead of rotating downwards, the whole bone, the whole bony, co bony column will sink inside the foot. As a general rule, and it is a general rule, it's not in all cases, heavier horses tend to sink rather than rotate. Horses that sink tend to have a poorer prognosis and much more difficult to save than horses that rotate. The rotators are hard enough, sinkers uh, are even worse. And what happens is the whole bony column will sink in the foot. And that happens because you get detachment from heel I'll use this one, sorry, excuse me. You get detachment of the wall from heel all the way around the hoof to the other heel. On founder cases, you generally get detachment here in this area only, sort of around the toe area. And the reason it detaches here is because this tendon directly opposite it is constantly pulling down. So the shear force is much stronger directly opposite that tendon. And I liken it to a tug of war match. If you imagine a tug of war match, on one side you have team deep digital flexor tendon, on this side you have team lamini. Each member of the team have five members. They all have exactly the same strength and exactly the same stamina. So you take up the strain, pull, what happens? Nothing, because each team cancels each other out and the rope remains in the middle. If I go over to team lamini and I pull a member of team lamini out, what will happen is Team Deep Digital will start to win the pull and the rope will slowly start to move this way. If I go and pull another few members of Team Lamini out, Team Deep Digital will win quite quickly. And that's, I know it's very crude and basic, but that's basically what's happening in the foot. As these lamini start to fail, the Deep Digital Flexor Tendon will pull upwards at the back and it will rotate the bone downwards into the foot. With a sinker, you get detachment from heel all the way around to the other heel and the whole bony column sinks in the foot and that's known as a sinker. Uh, like I said to you, heavier horses tend to suffer from sinker. So the, that's just a quick classification of the different types. We have developmental, we have acute, that's when there is inflammation but there is no bone movement. We have acute founder, when the bone is rotating inside the foot, when it's actively rotating, it's acute founder. When it rotates and stops, it becomes chronic founder. There's type 1 and type 2, which we're not going to uh, go into. And then finally, sort of standalone is a sinker. So a horse would go acute and then sinker. Some horses will go acute, acute founder, and then go sinker. Every horse is different, and the, the, the way that they go differs greatly. And it's what makes this disease uh, so difficult to uh, uh, treat. So... That is what uh, the classifications of laminitis. I'm just going to pull uh, a drawing that I've done. And I just want to show you diagrammatically uh, what we mean by this. The first thing we're going to uh, deal with is, is this one here that says normal. So this, roughly speaking, is the normal orientation of the distal phalanx or P3 or the coffin bone inside the hoof. And this, this relationship between this surface of the bone and the hoof wall should be, they should be parallel to each other and this thickness should roughly be the same all the way down. This distance here should roughly be this the same as this distance here. This is known as sole depth or solar depth. 
interesting this is a parameter here soil depth that you lose quite quickly in laminitis and, and how much soil you're left with is a big indicator of how successful you can be uh, with your treatment it's one thing that the vet and the farrier will look at when they x-ray your horse and they're having a discussion about the way forward and so on so roughly speaking this is the normal orientation of uh, the distal phalanx if we move to this diagram here this now we've got the bone and it's rotated slightly down so we're getting a bigger distance here than we have up here it's not the best drawing I should have sort of gone in a little bit more with my hoof so the bone has rotated slightly down and we no longer have this this gap here is much much more than this gap here so we haven't got this nice uniform sort of gap all the way around we're starting to lose as the bone rotates down into the foot Again, I stress these are very basic drawings of, of what we mean by the terms. This one here at the top, this is chronic, okay, and this is a bit that I was saying about these ugly feet where they have really bulbous fronts here. It's called the laminar wedge. We have a big gap here where we've got a lot of necrotic tissue sitting in here, varying degrees of sole depth. We have massive amounts of heel growth. You get the big rings on them. The, the, the type of feet that your farrier has to heavily dress back with his rasp all of the time. That's sort of a chronic foot. And then this one here is the point that I was trying to make with the sinker. If you look where the, this is the extensor process of, of the coffin bone. If you look that it's slightly above the hoof capsule. If you look at this diagram here, the extensive process has now sunk down to below the level of the hoof capsule. And our sole depth here is very, very thin. Horses that sink, when you look at the x-ray, they, they often don't look like they've rotated. So you first look at them and you think, oh, the rotation doesn't look too bad because this relationship is still here. You might get a bigger distance, but actually when you measure this distance, which is called founder distance, from the top of the coronary band down, you realise that you've got uh, a sinker. So, very basically, that's what we mean when we use the word normal, foundered, chronics and, and sinkers. Okay, so... Uh, We'll leave that as it is. So, right. Uh, first aid. So, first thing we're going to, first thing I want to talk about is first aid and what can you do if you suspect your horse has got laminitis. Remember, I said earlier on, horses can founder quite quickly. Every second counts. So, it's your actions if you suspect laminitis are really important. First things first is if you know what the cause is, then you need to remove the cause. And by that, I mean. Uh, your horse has broken out of its stable, it's got into the feed barn, it's eaten a whole bag of feed, all right, or it's got its nose in a bag of feed. You need to remove the potential cause, which is the bag of feed. Once you've done that, uh, there's, there's, there's a few things that you can do. The next thing you need to be doing, uh, well, if it's, if, it's, if it's got its nose in a bag of, of feed and it's eaten three quarters of a bag, you need to keep your eye on it. You don't necessarily have to call the vet out because it won't be lame at this point, but you do need to keep a close eye on it. And the moment it does start to go lame or starts to look uncomfortable, you need to get the vet out. But if you get your horse in or for whatever reason you come up one day and it's really, really lame, there are a few things that you can do. The first thing, really important, is a deep bed. Okay, shavings ideally because it will help to pack into the to the to the contours of the foot and it'll give some support. So a nice deep bed. Another thing that you can do is get a, a tail bandage, rolled up tail bandage, place it down the centre of the frog, and then tape tape it onto the foot. And what that will do again, it will give mechanical support to the foot while you're waiting for the vet or farrier. But like I said earlier on, it really should be the vet that you're calling because it is an emergency uh, and, and, and legally it's the vet's job to, to, to first deal with this. From a farrier point of view, in the really early stages, if, if your horse is trimmed regularly and your horse is not due a trim or it's not due shoeing, certainly unshod horses, the farrier shouldn't really get involved unless the vet requires glue on shoes or anything like that to be done. The best thing to do if possible is to just leave the feet alone while the saw and everything's inflamed. So if the if your foot looks something like that, uh, I would argue the best thing your farrier can do is nothing. Because the last thing the horse wants is putting all its weight on one leg while the farrier jumps under and tries to strip all the sole out and snip all the wall off it and, and just you just run the risk of unstabilising an already unstable structure. So if it's not founded and it's in the acute phase and its feet are looking okay, I would argue don't do anything. The vet is the person to be called. So a deep bed, remove the cause, uh, as some sort of support, rolled up tail bandage is ideal down the centre of the frog and tape it to the foot. 
and get the vet out uh, immediately. Uh, that's the best sort of first aid advice I can give you. I do want to make a point though. If your horse is overweight and you suspect he's got or she's got laminitis, it's really, really important that you do not starve your horse. There's a condition called hyperlipidemia or hyperlipidemia, okay, and it can be very, it can be fatal quickly for overweight or obese horses. Some people say, right, that's it, I've had enough now, my horse is too fat. I'm just going to starve it. What happens is because the horse is storing so much fat, it will go into shock and the body will release the stored fat in a wallet instantly and it rapidly overloads the body, uh, it can overload the liver and the horse is fatal and the horse will, will, will drop down dead. Okay, So it's really important that you do not starve your horse. Hay is always better than haylage. Soaked hay to get rid of the sugars out of it. Uh, just make sure something is going through the horse's system to prevent this sort of negative energy balance and this hyperlipidemia from kicking in because it can be fatal. So they're the type of things that you can do uh, from a horse owner's point of view before the vet arrives and the farrier arrives and the cavalry arrives and everybody starts to put fancy stuff on and, and everybody's fighting to save your horse's life. The, the hours before that you really can intervene and, and truly make a difference so the next thing I'm going to talk about are the signs. Okay, some of the signs. I'm not going to go too much into causation. I'm just going to mention the big three in a minute. But some of the signs that your horse is suffering from laminitis. The number one sign is pain, lameness. Uh, there's grades. There's, there's oval grades for laminitis where he grades them one to four, varying degrees of, of soreness for your horse. Uh, but all horses with laminitis will be in some sort of pain. Some will be, it will be horrendous pain. It will be difficult to watch. Uh, so lameness is absolutely a sign. Uh, another one is the laminitic stance, uh, which uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you Google laminitic stance equine, there'll be a thousand pictures come up. And what happens is the horse will push its front feet out in front of it and it will rock back onto its heels and it will try and shift its body weight to to its back feet it will tuck its hind feet under its belly and what it's trying to do is shift all the way away from the, the painful bit which is this bit here the front of the hoof okay and it's a class they call it the laminitic stance your horse may be sweating it may look depressed it will certainly look uh, distressed in the acute phase uh, there won't be very many changes to the feet you're unlikely to see bruising in the feet at this stage you will have an increased digital pulse and a very strong digital pulse. The abaxial sesamoid pulse, which is uh, at the fetlock. If you don't know where to find your abaxial sesamoid pulse, the next time your farrier or your vet visits, make them show you where to find it. That will be up and it will be pounding. It will be up for two reasons. One, because of the laminitis and two, because it's in pain and you will have an increase in blood pressure. So you will be able to feel uh, the digital pulse. Usually there are a few exceptions and some horses it doesn't seem to happen with, uh, but there's always exceptions to the rules. So uh, the signs that you'll see in the really early days, uh, uh, really early hours, are lameness, soreness, sweating, depression in some cases, a reluctance to walk, uh, pounding digital pulse, a, a really heavy digital pulse. It's all you're really going to see in the acute phase. In the acute founder phase, if your horse starts to founder, there are a few extra signs that you can check for. One of them is if you put your thumb on the coronary band here, you can do it on this one as well. If you put your thumb on the coronary band here on your horse and you press down, if your horse has foundered, there will be a depression there. When you push it in, there'll be nothing there. You'll, you'll be able to push your finger in quite far. The only way to know that is to test your horse when it doesn't have laminitis, learn what that feels like and then when you press it in, if it's foundered, you'll notice that it's much softer there and you can push your thumb in further. What happens is if the bone is rotated from this position, from this position here, okay, and it rotates, it creates a void here that you can, you can then feel. If you can pick your horse's foot up, uh, horses that are foundered, you may get a depression in this hurry area here just in front of the apex of the frog this is the front of the frog so in this area here you may get what we call a solar prolapse and it can vary in degrees it can be quite alarmingly large in severe cases to just a small little lump in in the more mild cases okay that is always an area and a cause for concern bruising in this area is also a big 
cause for concern. So there are some of the signs that you can see. Again, I, I'm mindful that I don't want to overload everybody with information to the point where it becomes a lesson rather than, than, than hints and tips. Uh, so there are some of the signs that you'll see. Uh, I just want to talk quickly about the three causes and try and clear up some of the, the, the misunderstandings. Fat pony laminitis. Traditionally, it was a, was a spring disease. Uh, the grass comes through, grass creates, the more energy it gets from the sun, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, creates sugars and fructose which are in the grass. Uh, that can, too much of it, can, can cause problems. And what will happen is once the horse eats it all, inside its gut, it will start to ferment. When it starts to ferment, it creates lactic acid. The acid will inflame the gut wall. It will be absorbed into the bloodstream. It then becomes toxic, and that's what interferes with the blood supply in this area okay once the blood supply in the lamina bed starts to become disturbed and it's not receiving the blood it then becomes inflamed and laminitis starts so again that's basic that's the basic cycle of fat pony laminitis the other one is uh, Cushing's disease okay which is a tumor on the pituitary gland the pituitary gland is inside the brain and the pituitary gland controls the region of the brain that, that produces dopamine uh, there's a disconnection between the pituitary gland uh, and the production of dopamine and it ends up with elevated levels of a hormone called ACTH which stands for adrenocorticotropic hormone. Elevated levels of ACTH is a sign that your horse has got Cushing's. Now in this day and age there's a drug called Percent which is very good at, at re-establishing the connection between the, the uh, the pituitary gland and the hypothalamic region of the brain where dopamine is produced again I'm paraphrasing greatly it's a little bit more complicated than that but that is a cause of laminitis this ACTH hormone will again cause an interruption in the blood supply here and then inflammation and then laminitis so the result is the same it just gets there a slightly different way and equine metabolic syndrome is very similar to type 2 diabetes type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease where the body doesn't produce insulin uh, it does produce the cells that produce insulin but your own body kills the cells before they produce insulin and the second one is type 2 diabetes which is the lifestyle sort of diabetes uh, and what happens is you produce insulin, the horse produces insulin as normal, but insulin uh, is a stimulus that tells the cells to take in sugar to burn for energy. Insulin resistance means the body doesn't respond to the stimulus which is insulin and you end up with too much glucose uh, in, uh, in the system and too much glucose is toxic and eventually it will end up as uh, uh, laminitis. So, uh, I hope that clears up some of the things. I know we haven't touched the, the, the size when it comes to laminitis. I just wanted to do a video without going into farrier and veterinary and all of that sort of stuff about what these words that you may come across mean uh, and what will happen in the early stages of your horse getting laminitis. As always, leave a, a question in the comment below and I will endeavour to answer it for you best I can. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.